There's no proper way of telling somebody you can't be gay. I gotta tell them straight up, you can't be a sodomite. If God said, you know, that, that feminists shall not inherit the kingdom of God, I gotta say it just like Gucci sandals on the way I'm sliding up. I won't join no gang cause I speak truth and I ain't slime enough. I can't kill my brothers. We the same, it's just not adding up. Esau, he a kill us. Gino side, he keeps attracting us. Most, Most I, I say, say be fruitful, multiply, so we be adding up. Compare his seed to the sand of the sea. We deep, so you can't add us up. My people, they got hate inside their heart. They wanna paint us up. Grew up in the red zone, blood tears. I see red flags on us. This world be killing me with lies the way they capping on me. Like these publicans, they coons and seeing the way they taxing on me. Prove what you say, the evidence. Show me the facts, little homie. Don't hold your tongue, just bring it out. What's on your mind, little Brody? Riding on 4 Giados, bougie, how we sit, Moscato. Huh. Feast days of the Lord, champagne be rainy, poncho. Huh. Salvation of the Lord's people, come on, we need that pronto. Huh. Wisdom, yes, it bring riches, like we just won a lotto. Keep these huh. commandments in the faith, my brother, that's the motto. Huh. Most how humble you quick, boy, if you think you macho. Israel, we poor, but we rich. Alright, Jesus. Alright, we're gonna bring it out there, said, yeah, how about you guys with Alright, we're gonna pick up where the brother left off on how we have to have judgment. And our forefathers did the same, all right? The Lord is about order. He even Adam to the ground, all right? He had everything in his proper order. All right. Second Chronicles chapter 19 and verse four. So verse out. one, actually. Verse one, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hananiah, the swear, it's like a seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldst thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee it's like it from before the Lord. Right. Verse 3. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, and that it's like it, and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to see God. And that's what every Israelite has to do. Right, you have to prepare your heart to see God, the Most High. Yeah, how about Shmei I was shot? Uh, right, and that's done through your actions. Right, it's found that Jehoshaphat, what's, what's that him? It was Jehoshaphat, and he tore down the groves. He tore down the idols. See, we're not dealing with that. Right, go ahead. Verse 4, and Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim and brought them back unto the Lord Yahweh right. of their fathers. And he said, Judges in the land, throw he, all. Sorry. He said, What? And he said, he said judges, judges in the, in the land, land. Go ahead. Throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city. Right, and that's what we see today on another level. City by city, we see judges, right, on our highways and byways, executing and performing the will of the Lord. Right. Uh, go ahead. Verse 6. Get out. And said to the judges, Take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man. And this goes for every teacher, right? What did it say? Uh, for ye judge not for man. Right, we're not here to judge and appease man, right? We're not here to cater to feelings. We're not here to cater to your emotions or your specific circumstances. Or else we'll be a respecter of persons, uh -huh. which is contrary to the law, right? So remember, Jehoshaphat set up judges. And to be a judge, you must know the law. You must know the Torah to the best of your ability. Right? Go ahead. But for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Verse 7. Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Let the fear of the Lord be upon you in every judgment that you may make upon this land. Right. Uh, and the same thing goes for them. The same thing goes for you and your household when you're at work. When you're traveling to a fro, judgments and precepts must always retain in your mouth. Can you bring out Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? That's why it says in the law, you got to write the law upon your doorposts. Right. You literally constantly have to remind yourself of the precepts, of the scriptures. Right. Bring it out, King. The book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Bring it out! This book of the law. Who's that? Hey, brother. Real quick. You, you brother. Brother! One minute for God, one minute for the Bible. You don't have one minute for God. Wow! Come on, brother. That's alright. Bring it out, Gabe. Bring it out. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. Right. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Right. I mean, 
I better continue to hear brothers talk about the word of God. If I hear brothers just not bring out precepts no more in their conversation, I'm gonna raise my eyebrow. That's right. You know, uh, hey, hey, hey. Right, where the precepts at? What's going right. on? Like the brother said, the orb. What happened? Now you're talking about is whatever. God knows what. All right. Too much of man. Yeah, I was about to say too much of a man's wisdom, but not enough of the Lord, the words of the Lord. Uh -huh. I got a precept. Bring, bring out Psalm chapter 36, verse 4, by the chart. Right. That's plain upon tables. In the world, when you go to work, you want to hear man's wisdom. And it's going to vex you dry. Right? When you hear Esau speak at work, when you hear Esau at their parties, at their raves, you see him on TikTok, Twitter, quick, giving false counsel, false judgment, false. And that's vexing to the point where it's going to make your spirit dry. That's why we're in a dry and thirsty land. All right? You got it. Book of Psalms, chapter 36 and verse 4. Bring it out. He divides a mission upon his bed. So in verse 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 36 and verse 3. Bring it out. The words of his mouth are iniquity. It's what? Are oh, iniquity. iniquity. Sometimes the words, and, and if you happen to brothers, the words of your mouth can be iniquity. You see that? Just folly, just madness. The Lord's going to hold everything and weigh everything in balance uh, from our tongue from our actions when we look at something everything's going to be weighed in a balance the same way you may weigh yourself in a balance when you're examining yourself or your household the lord is going to do that much more uh, he's going to weigh your tongue how you treated that brother what you said to that brother right how you treated your wife how you treated your brother your animals right. it says a righteous man will regard the life of his beast Right. Everything's going to be weighed in a balance. And you have to see if you're wanting or if you're falling short in anything. Which is why it's so imperative that you examine yourself daily. You know, I encourage brothers, all the brothers that stand before, you know, the angels and other men, you got to examine yourself. And I speak to myself as well. Right. Whether it be every night, I encourage you to be every night. You don't want to tarry in your judgments or tarry in your examination. With examination comes ex uh, uh, judgment. Because after you examine yourself, you have to make the proper judgments and actions to prevent that which is falling short. Before you got your precept, I want to continue on to Psalms 36. Yep. Reading on. And so I can. And deceit. He, he hath left off to be wise and to do good. He devised a mischief upon his bed. He set up himself in a way that is not good. He abhorred not evil. That's right. You can bring out your precept. Kai, the land back on um on the on the folly and the iniquity of your tongue. This is um Psalms chapter 37 and verse. I remember you brother we spoke last week. Oh yeah, I was speaking. I talked to him about the other one. You mean all praises. You remember your nationality? Yeah. What's that? Just uh, Hispanic. Just Hispanic? Yeah. You know what Hispanic comes from? You said what? Uh, nothing, I don't want to say anything stupid. No, 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 no. No stupid answers, no stupid questions. This is a godly discourse between us, right? Sincerely asking, if you don't know by all means, you don't know everything either. Well, well all I know is that I can't eat, uh, could eat uh, a steak or chicken yesterday. Why is that? Good Friday. Catholic. Catholic? Yeah, just a bunch of other stuff. Alright, so, let me ask you this. Do you know what, uh, what's the main religion in Mexico? This is what you are, Catholic, so called. Oh, really? Yeah. Catholicism is major in Mexico. But why is that? It may be here and there, but Catholicism is real heavy, right? A lot of Hispanics are deep into Catholicism and the Trinity. 
right? The reason why is because when the Spaniards came over around 1400s, 1500s, right? They came over with a lot of things. Pestilence, diseases, a sword, guns, right? But they also came with Catholicism. And they also came with last names for you to bear. What's your last name? Uh, Morales. Morales. And so here it is today, you're bearing the last name of a man that's wicked, right? That also gave you Catholicism, right? Yeah, yeah. So your last name is Morales, and you also exercise Catholicism, right? Those things were given to you from the so-called white man. Is that your true identity? Uh, you like that? Hey, um, being a Morales or being Catholic, is that is that real? Uh, like, uh, is, is that what your forefathers were doing before they came over there? Ma, ah! Um, I usually don't really pay attention to this stuff. I mostly just, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, just uh, regular things. My parents used to tell me when I was young, like, you know, just. Yeah, I mean, I'm just mostly just raised on, on believing, uh, uh, believing in uh, Christ. Believing in Christ. There's nothing wrong with believing in Christ. I mean, I'm not saying that's that. good. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, I just taught what I was taught. You know, I just, I just know. Right. It's just not. It's just not a really good thing. All right. Let me ask you another question. Do you like being lied to? Uh, I've been lied to twice my, uh, throughout my years, my childhood. Was it a good feel? Was it a good feeling? Mm, it was just, mi it was just a uh, little minor lies, like uh, if you swallow your gum, like stuff in your body, or if you, if you, if you swallow one of these. Right. Well, overall, is lying good or bad according to the Bible? Um, lying's not bad as long as, long as like, you know, if you're trying to protect people that, uh, protect, protect uh, the truth, uh, like, uh, like, you know, just, uh, bad stuff in general, like, if you want to do it for their, for their own good. Yeah. Let us read you something. It's, it's, let us read you, like, three verses. We know it's cold, right? We got you. All right? Bring out Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Right now, you say you've been taught and raised up that there's God, there's a Christ, and that's true. Right? However, it has to be taught a certain way. Because if not, you may have people that fall into Catholicism along with the many other denominations that there are today, such as Christianity, right? Or non denomination, whatever the case is. However, many there are. You can bring up Revelation 1, verse 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 3. Bring it out. Blessed is he that readeth. What it say? Blessed is he that readeth. It says, blessed is he that readeth. Right? They're going to be blessed because once you read, you're going to be able to understand the truth of the matter. And the truth of the matter is that Catholicism is not found in the Torah. It's not found, it's not, it's not found in the New Testament. It's not found from Genesis to Revelation. And because it's not found, what does that mean? What should that tell you? It should make you examine Catholicism and ask yourself, damn. Why am I being taught this? Why are my people being taught this? The same way we have to ask ourselves, why am I in Christianity? What true purpose is it serving? Is it teaching me a lie, God? Shouldn't you want to know the truth? Uh, of course. You know, That's right. Learn, like uh, things that the world has You said what, brother? Uh, uh nothing. It, it's, it's no, it's hard. Go ahead, brother. You know, like uh, just uh, learning. Uh, never mind. I'll, I'll just all right, let me let me bring, let me show you something. Let me show you something. It's in Mark 32 verse 7. Remember, you know we're not the so-called white, people, right? We're not going to make you feel, you know, uh, inferior to us. Oh, I'm right. Not, this is a cordial conversation. We want you to feel open to speak. Bring us out, King. Okay. Whoever yeah. got Sirach 32 in the book of Sirach, chapter 32, and verse 7, and it reads. Bring it up, right? We don't want you to forget this, brother. It said, blessed is he that read it. So as we read to you, read you these words, who are willing to uh, resonate it? 32 verse 7. Start from the sword. The book of 30, the book of Sirach, chapter 32, and verse 7, and it reads. Read it up. Speak, young man. What did it say? Speak, young man. If there be need of thee, and yet sacredly, when thou art twice X. Right. So don't be afraid to speak your mind, brother. Uh, yeah, I'll try, I'll try practicing that, uh, on, like some other stuff. Like, mostly my sister uh, uh, says that, like, you know, I'm weird and I shouldn't speak my mind. Uh, you know, I, I just think that we can say, like, uh, like, I should always speak my mind. Uh, uh, stuff. Yeah, we 
like it though. It's a balance for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm just not really good with speaking to people generally. Okay. It's, I'm, I'm like a billionaire, like, filled with crippling and such things. Okay, we get that. And guess what? Guess what it helps with that? That's right. That's right. Last time I checked, the Lord has the ability to make lame to take away the speech. Right? The Lord has the ability to take away all those things right. and to give. So if you read the words of the Lord, I mean, I can see that spirit just jumping off. And you feel more comfortable to talk. Right? Especially regarding matters that pertain to you and your salvation. Right? You just want to be bold in the Lord. You believe in God, right? All pre all right. Can you say that louder? Of course. I got right. bad ears. A little loud, a little loud. I couldn't hear you. Uh, Yell it a little bit. Uh, of course. That's right. right. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there a little bit. All right, all right. Now, all right. All right. See what the words of the Lord can do. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, I, I actually got. A, I'm actually meeting up with some friends. So. All right, we'll, we'll bring this out to your friends. Bring that out. John 8:32. Book of John, chapter 8, and verse 32. Go. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free, right? Right? That's right. And Catholicism isn't the truth. You want to know why? Uh, because they tell you that you can eat pork. They tell you that you can break the Shabbat. They tell you that you have to fast and not eat uh, meat for a month. And they also tell you that you got to get nasty, dusty ass ashes from your forehead and parse it like this. Wow. Yeah, that's nasty. An old man touching his finger is an enemy. And ashes, it's <laughs> in cold steel. And he's doing this. You gotta walk around with it all day. Actually, I've, I've seen that a couple times back when I was in high school. Like, uh, like when it was come to uh, like lanterns and stuff, I've seen some, some of the teachers that would do that. Like, I've seen that too. Have like a, a dot on their head, cross on their head. I went to the uh, Detroit Crystal Ray. I've seen about that as well. Oh no, uh, there was actually uh, uh, a Detroit, a Detroit uh, STEM. Uh, okay. The original school. Like, just, uh, I've been to both of those. You know, the original and the uh, STEM. See that? But guess what? That's not what you, brother, that's what we tell them. Oh, right? God never said do that. Oh, I thought that was, that was part of the thing. Right. Those are things that we were taught. All right. So let's show, let us show you the truth. Real quick, okay. and you say you believe in the, you believe in God, right? Okay. And you also want to follow the truth, right? Uh, all right, all praises, all praises. Bring out First Timothy chapter four, verse one. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. Let us show you something. Look at First Timothy chapter four and verse number one. Bring it out. And it reads: Now the Spirit speaketh expressively. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Right, these are the latter times. Go ahead. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits. A seducing spirit is going to want to make you reverse your ways in judgment. Go ahead. And doctrines of devils. A doctrine of devil is something that's uh, just foreign, right? Something that's evil and lewd, right? A doctrine of de uh, devils is not going to be found in the Bible, right? You're not going to find any doctrine of devils in the Bible. Right? So if some man is telling you it's good to have ashes on your head but it's not found in the Bible, what does that tell you? Is that it's a doctrine of the devil or is it of the Lord? Uh, what would it have to be? I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say anything that will that will offend anyone. Anyway, I'll just, I'm just, uh, I'm usually just with a no comment kind of guy. Let me ask you something. Did Christ offend people? Uh, oh, he's See, so that's why we said in Revelation, or the scriptures say in Revelation 1 and 3, blessed to see that reading, right? When you read the accounts, Christ did indeed invent you in John 6 chapter. Yeah. He said things that were offensive on purpose, right. right? He was trying their spirit. Bring that out in John chapter 6. Right. Let us show you one more, all right? One more, brother. What's your one. name, brother? Uh, Miles. Miles, that's right. Miles Morales? No. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, okay, okay. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Well, actually, my, that's actually, I actually my nickname. Who would have been used to talk? My actual name is just Charlie. Your name is what? Uh, it's uh, Brown. B-R-E. You know? Okay. So it's not Morales. Yeah, I just like that. It's like that. that, 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 that. So cool. Okay, brother. All great. Let's get one more. I got you. Uh, John 6 and 48. John chapter 6 and verse 48. You know, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Right, so this is Christ speaking. Go ahead. 
This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. What? I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Do you think that was literal when Christ said, you know, bread is my flesh, you gotta eat of my flesh? Do you think that was literal? Um, well, not, well, I'm sure it was a, like figuratively. Like, exactly. Uh, like, uh, I, when, I was, when I was young, I used to, you know, it was always a bread. Okay, go ahead. Verse 52, the Jews thereof strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Right, and the Jews are saying, what are you talking about? How can I eat you? Why would you say that? Go ahead. Then Yahushai said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Go ahead. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Go ahead. For my flesh is me indeed. You can jump down to verse 60. Verse number 60. Many thereof of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Yahushua knew in himself that his disciples murmured at him, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? He said, Does this offend you? Go ahead. Verse 62. What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. As you said earlier, those figures, he wasn't literally saying, eat my flesh, but some people didn't get that. Why would, why would he offend some people? I don't know, because they, uh, they got the wrong idea. They got the wrong idea, and also it wasn't meant for everybody. Yeah. The word's not meant for everybody. And when something's not meant for everybody, it's going to come, off, come across offensive sometimes. That's right. Yeah. And that's okay. Right. There's no proper way of always telling the truth. Right? So that's facts. There's no proper way of telling somebody you can't be gay. I got to tell them straight up. You can't be a sodomite. If God said, you know, that, that feminists shall not inherit the kingdom of God, I got to say it just like that. Right. Now someone can tell me, well, you hurt my feelings. You hurt my feelings. Am I supposed to care what they feel or how God feels? God! No. Is this gonna like uh No no man? That's just a sincere question. Should I feel should I cater their, to their feelings or should I hear what God has to say about that? Oh uh, it's hot. I'm I'm sorry, it's just that hey I usually don't get pressured to It's not what we want you to say. It's about understanding what the words of the Lord said, yeah. right? And if you follow Him, you have to observe and keep His word as well. Right. That's why it says, "Blessed is He that read the Scriptures." Oh yeah. Uh, well, anyway, uh, I, I I have to get going. I'm I'm so I'm so sorry. All right, that's alright, brother. I, we got a flyer for you. That's alright, brother. Thank you. Stop. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Have a nice day. Look into that. No problem. Oh, sorry. You know, Israel. You know. Why is it for everybody? He's that sodomite that you always see in TV. It's real yeah. soft and dainty. Yeah. Why is this? I don't think you can do that. Yeah. yeah, that timid, you know, it needs buckling spirit. <laughs> and that spirit jumped on a lot of our brothers, unfortunately. That's you just... know. Bring that out again from the top. Uh, verse 2. Uh, two or three. You can start verse uh, 2 again. Start verse 1. Time. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Yahweh. That's right. We didn't come with fancy big ass words at all, right? We wasn't pulling out a thesaurus and kind of saying, right, you know, this is our showboat. We're not doing that. Uh -uh. It's too much. It's, it's, it's extra. All right? That's what the Greeks did. Go ahead. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahweh Shai Mashiach and him crucified. I right, wouldn't want to tell you too much besides, thus said the Lord, Yahweh was shot. That's right. Uh -huh. That's why we brought up the account of Christ. Right. Go ahead. Verse 3. 
and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. So we see and witness the same thing again to this very hour, right? When we stand with our brothers, though they may be trembling, whether they have a little bit of fear in their spirit, whatever the case may be, right? We stand with them and still exhort them and persuade them, right? In the name of the Lord, Yahweh by Yahweh. <laughs> Go ahead. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. In demonstration of the spirit and power. Uh, point in case again to Yahweh shot. You're going to keep magnifying the name of the Lord. That's right. Go ahead. Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Yahweh. In other words, a lot of men, their heart is set in Babylon. Their heart is given into the hands of men. In the hands of men, they're in different religions, ideologies, beliefs, cultures, so on and so forth. All right. During that time, the heart of man was given into the hands of um, Epicureans. It was given into the hands of philosophers, Stoics. It was given to the hand of many men that had their feet everywhere. You got a point? Pleasure. Self-indulgence. Hedonism. And some to the extreme opposite end, to the point where they said, touch not, taste not. Feel not. Don't do nothing. And so, you know, you got a lot of philosophies on her. Go ahead. Verse 6. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to not. Right. You're not going to see us with any other books besides the Bible. In other words, they mean filtered through the scriptures. Huh? Right. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Come on, brother. Real quick. This is for you, brother. Oh, brother. Brother. Uh, sorry. You got it. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of Yahweh in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which Yahweh ordained before the world unto our glory. And it's a mystery to an extent because some people can't perceive Yahweh show. That's why it says we see darkly, right? We see through a glass darkly. It's only so much that we can see, through, uh, see and understand Yahweh Shah and the Heavenly Father and the mysteries that they may hold. But, you know, how much more of it to be a mystery to those that are without knowledge, to those who may not know anything, your, I, your, your nationality, right? Uh, so with that, we jump back to the lesson, right? On judgment and examination. We can go back to 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 4. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, brother. <laughs> I don't think we stop. You want to talk? Yeah. Huh. Second Chronicles chapter 19 and verse 1. No, no, he said, he oh, down verse, five. verse 5. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city. And that's why you need, that's the spirit, right? It's the spirit that came up. It's the spirit that we're going back to this. That's why you need judges set in the land. Uh, right? uh, to exhort, yeah. to establish, and to set in order. And it's deep for all the teachers, the readers, right? The work that you do in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you're helping establish another man's house and his mind for the spirit. Right? That goes for every teacher, reader, whatever position you may be doing in the name of the Lord, right? Hey, you're helping set up another man's house. Whether he be by himself or whether he have a family. Go ahead. Verse 6, and said to the judges, take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man. But for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Right. Go ahead. It's like it. And so do we find that the Bible is our standard when it comes to making judgments. We don't look to Esau's law. We don't look to his studies. Neither do we look to Roman law and, and Yale. We don't look to man for his wisdom and how to make judgments and uh, you know how to move the discretion or whatever other wisdom there may be. We don't look towards him. Right. Uh, we look to Yahweh by Shmuel Shah. That's this right. This Bible is a testament. Go ahead. Verse 7. Wherefore, now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. Yeah, there's no iniquity in Yahweh by Shmuel Shah. 
In other words, there's only perfection in the heavenly body. Right? And not that can persuade us with gifts. They try to persuade us with gifts in time past. You know, I've heard brothers say, well, what about, you may, you don't always have to persuade a gift with money. Kind of, you know, use trickery of words to persuade some money. Right? And, hey, well, you know, I can't work with your body. Well, you know, my brother, with my kid. That's trying to persuade men. That's trying to bribe men. Right? With my kid. He's right here. I have to feed him. How else can I do it? I, that's man trying to bribe me. So he can live through his own madness and through his sin. Go ahead. Verse 8. Moreover in Jerusalem did, did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they return to Jerusalem. And for controversies. You're always going to have controversies in the land of Israel. That's always going to happen. That's enough. That's just life. Right? That's James the fourth chapter. Right? Mm. Where those yeah. wars uh, come amongst you. Go ahead. Verse 9. And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord. Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord. Bring out Exodus chapter 24, verse 3, by Bishar. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 3. So 24 and 3? Correct. Right. Book of Exodus chapter 24 and verse 3, and it reads, Get out. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said all the words which the Lord has said will we do. And that's what you got to tell yourself when you done reading. Hey, the Lord said that, so shall I do. Right? I shall complete that. Uh, you can't just read Sirach and then read Ecclesiastes and just close the book and hop on the sticks and say, ah, right, I got my reading in. Wow. You're supposed to kind of di let that digest. You know, when Jake eat a big meal, you kind of sit down, let it digest. That's right. You don't go for another read. You don't go for You kind of let it get out. You let it digest. And so when you find yourself reading the words of the Lord, eating of that meal, he get Proverbs 9 to 1. When you eating of that meal, you gotta let it digest and let it resonate. You gotta kinda just, you know, I think about that, man. You gotta get the righteous pick, kinda kick your teeth. That was good, that was a good point. David did that, that was a good point. You know what I mean? You know, you make sure you get all that meat. It's a lot of, it's, it's good food, man. Right. It's good living. You know, uh, go ahead. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 1. Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn down her seven pillars. She hath killed her beast. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. Right. And so it is when you read the Bible, right? You will find that wisdom always has a plate for you. You open up the book of Kings, hey, here's a plate. You open up the book of Psalms, there's another plate. You open up Ephesus, there's a plate. I you open up Sirach, there's a plate. And you read in Genesis, you got a good plate. Oh, yeah. So on and so forth. Right? In my father's house, there are many mansions. Uh, you know, best believe in a mansion, you're going to find some nice, delicate things. When you're in a mansion, you kind of just want to look around. What's this? What's this about? Uh, I don't know if brothers have been to a big house, you kind of just look at uh, That's how it is with the Bible, we just kind of want to look all day. What's this? What's that? Uh, got it. Verse 3. She has sent forth her maidens. She cried upon the highest places of the city. Verse 4. Whoso is simple, let him turn him in hither. As for him that wandereth, understanding. She said to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Hold that. Go to Sirach 15 and 3. Eat of my bread. Drink of the wine that is mingled. I got something for you, man. You think your E-man made you a nice plate? Yeah, that's all praises. That's beautiful. That's mighty. Work the Lord, right? Uh, That's Yahweh. But the Lord, wisdom, they, they make that meat to perfection. Mm. That's roasted perfect. That's better than uh, Ramses. That's better than, uh, who's that guy with the flame of hair? More than Ramses. I can't think of the other guy. She got a lot of chefs on her. Oh, uh, oh, God. Yeah, God Fury. Right? You got a lot of men on earth that, that really boasted her cooking. Hey, Wisdom, that cookie's the best fish ever. That's right. 
I'll close out with two more precepts. I got two more precepts, I'll close out. You got it. So right, chapter 15 and verse 3. Bring it out. With the bread of understanding shall she feed him and give him the water of wisdom to drink. Read that again, King. Sarai, chapter 15, verse 3. With the bread of understanding shall she feed him and give him the water of wisdom to drink. I'm going to give you that water of wisdom to drink. Huh? And like you said, Genesis uh, 3 and 24, that flaming cherub, he got that big sword. And he's going to kind of swing that sword to make sure you're not getting that bread, that water. That's right. right? That good understanding. One more verse, Luke 22, verse 30. Chapter 22. Chapter 22, and he said, what verse? 31. Verse 31, yep. and it reads, see, hold on, try to make it drunk. That's that sword in her hand. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Throw it away. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, right. that he may sift you as wheat. So Satan is plotting. And the Lord, Yahweh Shah, he didn't have to say that. He did not have to say that. <laughs> But he knew Satan's devices. Yeah. And that helps us to know that Satan is always part and therefore we can't be ignorant of his devices. Right? Uh, said Simon. Hey, Satan, hey, he wants you, man. There's no telling what happened behind the scenes. It's not really written. Hey, Satan said to you, how was I? Hey, I want Simon. He'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. Same way he kind of came up in Job to the like to the Lord and Job. Hey, Lord, I want Job. Satan's going to do that, man. Right. Hey, that's in Daniel the 10th chapter. Satan kind of prevents it, Daniel. You know, Satan always going to try to prevent stuff. Prevent the good things. Right. Even as Paul said, hey, Satan has prevented me to see through the Spirit. Yeah. So you got to, you know, the point I bring that out is to encourage Israel to examine yourself and to realize when Satan's trying to hinder you from doing the work of the Lord. Uh -huh. But with that, Bit as well. Shalom. Kormashrola. 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 Kormashrola.